Hi, I'm Tara. Today we're going to look at five text effects in Canva. So the first text effect we're going to look at is a comic book effect or a pop arty effect. So I have picked Instagram square, but you can pick whatever size um, suits your project best. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a text box. So add a text box and we're just going to increase the size of it. And we're just going to type in kaboom. So we're just going to make this slightly larger. I'm going to put it in the center. If you um, if you hold um, your mouse and it will it will find the crosshairs for you. And once once it's found it, um, you can release it. Then you know you can also do it in the position area. You can uh, middle and center, so it's already there. So that's why it's not available. So, um, so we're going to change this font to a font called Bangers. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a gradient color. So, if we click on Apps and we go, if you key in Type, it'll give you um, this three selections. So we're going to pick the gradient. This is only a kind of relatively new addition to Canva, but it's lifesaver. So <laughs> I have another um, quick tutorial on how exactly you use this, but I'll go through it all here as well. So we're going to click on Type Gradient and it gives you this icon here. So we're just going to click on it and it says, what will you design today? So we're going to change that to Kaboom. So, and we're going to change the font to bangers. So, the only thing I would say to you is that not all the fonts in Type Gradient are the same font, font list as is in Canva, like general Canva. So, um, so I uh, I know that bangers is part of the type gradient, but um, if we had picked something else um, and then you go back in here into type gradient and then you realize that it's not there. So that's a real pain because, as I say, they're not all there um, and then you have to maybe start your design again. So just to be aware that you need to make sure that both of them are available in both type gradient and in Canva. So once you have your font picked and um, you have typed your word, we're just going to add the gradient to it. So comic book, it's usually kind of red orange. So um so we just pick the first one as red. We're gonna delete the middle one and we're gonna make this one a kind of orangey color. More orange. And then okay, you can kind of play around with it to get the best gradient that you you like. So, um, and then you just click add to design and it will add it to your artboard. So then all we have to do is kind of match it to the size of this one because we want them both the same size. And already it kind of looks cartoony. So we go back to our original and we're going to move that to a second page. So just move that down there. And once again, we're going to center center it. And we're going to download it um, with a transparent background. So we go up here to share and we click on download, click on transparent background. We need to make sure that you're on the correct page. So deselect all pages and then just select page two and click done and click download. So we're just going to call it Kaboom. You need to just remember um, where you've saved it. Just maybe set up a folder for your project and save it down into that um, folder. And we go back to our first page and we click on Uploads and Upload Files. There it is, Kaboom. And we bring it in. So we just click on it and then because we centered it um, you should be able to just increase it back to the size of the page and it should be um, it should be the same size then so you can just bring your top and bottom 
back in. So, and then we're going to position it to the back. So we just drag it down under your orangey one. So once it's selected, we're going to edit the image. So if it was still as, as text, you wouldn't be able to edit it. Um, you could only like kind of change the color and um, add some effects to it. But this way you can actually edit it and add a shadow. So that's what we're going to do now. So it's in my recently used, but if you're looking for shadow, you click on edit image and you just scroll down to shadows and we're going to click on drop. So it adds a drop shadow, but we're going to just actually go in and um, change it slightly. So we're going to make the offset one. The shadow should be bottom right. The angle is zero. We're going to move the transparency to 90 and we're going to remove the blur completely. So it just gives it like a, a better, a stronger shadow, so to speak. And we're going to leave the color as black. So we're going to apply. And then we're going to go back in and we're going to do that again. So it doesn't just, it, it actually changes it for a second time. So um, this time we're going to, the transparency at 70, the offset two, and we're going to leave the blur this time. So you can see then it has a kind of a double, a double, double. <laughs> so, and click apply. So it's already, it's already looking pretty good. We're just going to increase the size of it, maybe just slightly. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back down to um, the page two with the, the black text. And we're going to make it white text this time. And then we're going to share. And we're going to download. And we're going to select, deselect all pages. Just select page two. Make sure your transparent background is clicked and click on download. And we're going to call it Kaboom White. And we're going to click OK. And then we're going to go back up to our page one and we're going to upload that file. So Kaboom White, click OK. And then we're going to add that to our page. So we're just going to resize it again, just into just to make sure that it's the same size. Let's bring this down a bit, and this one up. And we're just going to, as I say, just make sure that it's the same size as not that one, this one. Slightly larger. Okay, perfect. So the reason we're adding the white layer is just to make it look that bit more authentic as a comic book script. The comic books were originally printed on like large printing presses. And so each plate sometimes, it's sometimes slipped um, or they weren't exactly lined up. And so you get this kind of white shadow. So that is the, that is the reason behind it. Um, so just to make it look a little more authentic. So I'm going to just show you how to how to get that effect. So we're not going to use every we're not going to use the white on every letter, but we're just going to duplicate it a couple of times. And it's sometimes easier if you put a we just put a basic background on it just for the moment. Pick any color just so you know where they are. So because it's now an image, we can we can kind of size this and I'm just going to move that in there. So you just want a kind of sliver of white. So basically that's all we would want on the K. And then if you go to the A, and do the same. So you're basically just sectioning off parts of um, I might just duplicate that again. I'll just do the M. And then the last one we'll do is the O.
Okay. <clears throat> and then basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to position and we're going to move. So if you hold shift and go to the bottom, it'll select all of those for you. So um, and then we just move it below the orange. We're going to group them together and then we're just going to move them. So just so you have that kind of authentic looking offset. And now we're just going to finish it by um, adding the background. So first we go into elements and we're going to look for a sunburst background. So this one here, there are plenty that are, <coughs> excuse me, not, um, not part of the pro package. Um, so it depends what, what one you're working on. This is a pro image, so we're just going to right click on it and we're going to replace background. So that gets rid of that purple background that we had just temporarily. So the last thing, well, one of the last things we're going to add is a cartoon burst. Which is, you see it around text in, in comics. So we're going to go for this one, but again, there's lots of, um, there's lots of, versions that are not part of the pro. And then we just go position and we'll just move that below all of the text. And it's pretty effective. And then just to give that extra bit of a uh, comic book or pop party, we're just going to add a few little triangles. So if you click on elements and go into shapes, and click on triangle um, and we're just going to resize it into kind of a long and thin and then so I wouldn't put them at the end of these and um, they're just kind of you know they're just for effect really um, so and then um, can just duplicate them a couple of times and then reposition them and make them kind of just so they're not all the same, you know. you get the idea they can you can put them then you know you can uh, select if you hold shift and select them all and then duplicate that and just turn turn them around it just gives that a bit more dramatic effect if you're finding this tutorial useful so far hit that subscribe and if you have any other text effects that you um, would like me to show you how to do um, you can put them in the in the comments below and uh, and we'll see what we can do the next one we're going to look at is how to make um, some text kind of vintage looking so um, the first thing we need is to add a text box and um, I have picked um, a kind of landscape uh, artboard but it, it depends on your word or um, the size that you you require for your for your particular project so we're just going to type vintage and we're just going to make it a bit bigger so within the fonts um, Canva has a huge amount of fonts available so even if you key in vintage it will give you a list of kind of vintage looking um, fonts available. Um, I quite like this one, the Vintage Rotter. It's kind of um, it's kind of nice. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the color of this um, vintage text. So we're going to make it um, we're going to make it kind of this beige color here. 
um, and then we're going to add a slight border to it. So if you click on effects and click on outline and we're going to make the border this kind of blue color but we're going to reduce it down to about about 20. It's pretty good. And then we're going to select it and we're going to duplicate it a couple of times. So we just move that down there for a sec. And we're going to change the color of each of them. So the second one we're going to make completely blue. So we're going to fill it the same, same blue. Yep. Same blue as the border of the first one. There, and then the third one, we're going to make a kind of rusty colour. And it also needs to have the same rust border. And then we're going to position them. We'll go to layers and we're going to put the rust one at the very back and then the blue one below. The, so already it's looking kind of kind of vintage looking. So we're gonna put a like so three different colors on the top layer. So in order to do that, we need to um, make an image out of it as opposed to um, a text. So you can so you can reduce it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So we just duplicate the top layer. I'm just gonna move it down to here. And we're going to change the color of it to yellow. And we're going to hit share at the top. We're going to download. Need to make sure just that the correct page is um, is selected. So it's page two, and we want a transparent background. We'll click download. And we're going to call it vintage yellow. And click save and then we're going to click uploads and you just you just need to remember where where you've saved it <laughs> sometimes it could be a bit of a challenge um, we're just going to bring that in just click on it and it appears so then if you just make it the exact size that the others are and just set it on top and because it's an image, we can then we can then bring it down. So we're going to bring it down to about there, and then we're going to go back to this one, and we're going to change it to the the blue and the rust. So we're going to make it all of the blue. It's blue. So we're going to go share and we're going to click download, make sure transparent background is clicked and make sure you've selected the correct page, which is page two and done and download. And then we're just going to call this one blue and then we're going to upload it. Okay, so if it comes in with a white background, um, you've forgotten to click the transparent, so you just need to go and do it again, um, because otherwise it um, it doesn't work. So I'm just going to bring it up here and do exactly the same as we did with the yellow. I'm just going to make it the same size. I'm just going to set it on top. And this time we're going to bring it just to here. And we're just going to make it like a, a slither. And then we're going to do one more. Except this time we're going to make it the rust colour. And we're going to leave the, the blue border so it sits, so it sits on top. So again, download. Deselect, page two, transparent background. And then we're going to upload.
glued it. I know it's a bit involved, it's a bit in and out, but um, but it does, it, it is really effective. It does, it does look good. It's worth the effort. So once again, size your page. Sit on top. And just bring it up. So we're just going to make it look a little bit more vintage. So we're going to change the background color to an olive color um, just to make it a little more retro. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add an element. Um, so we're going to add like a speckled background. Um, so this is the one that we had picked. So I'm just going to make it fit. I know what you're thinking, it's black and it looks crazy. But when you go up to the top and change the color to the olive green, it looks pretty cool. The next one we're going to do is a reflective shadow. It's um, it's really easy to do, but really effective. It looks really good. The first thing we need to do is to add a text box. So we're just going to do a capital S. I'm going to do the word shadow, but you can do you know you can do whatever whatever word you like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the text font to um, and we're going to make it archivo black so this is a free font some of them are um, some of them are only available for canva pro but uh, but there's so many fonts available um, I just pick one that's um, that's free so we're going to duplicate it h a d o w so I'm just gonna and have them all in the line. I'm going to change to them. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to select them all and we are going to add a border to it. So you click on effects and you click on outline and we don't want it too thick. We want it about, about 15, 14, 15. And we're going to make it white. And then we're going to select the background and we're going to make it black. Okay, and then we're going to move each letter just slightly in front of the one it's beside. So we still want them all in the same line. Just want them to slightly overlap. Select them all and we're just going to center it then. So in order to give this a reflection then, what we need to do is we need to duplicate the page. Um, so now we have the same uh, same page. So we need to go up to share and we need to make it an image. So we click on download and make sure that we deselect all pages and we just select page two. And um, it doesn't necessarily have to have a transparent background, but we'll do that anyway. So, and you click on download. And then we are going to, just going to call this shadow. We're going to save and then we're going to click on upload files and click on shadow and click open and then when it brings it in you just click on it and so we're just going to make it exactly the same size as the one that's there already you do that just by stretching each corner and we're just going to bring it down and bring it up and then to get the reflection we go to flip and we're going to flip uh, vertical. So 
then we're just going to move it down so then it's it's kind of upside down and then in order to get it to look like it's a full reflection we're just going to I'm just going to pull it up to here and we're going to change the transparency on it so we're going to bring the transparency right back to to about 25 just so it's a kind of simple simple gray and then what we're going to do is just going to duplicate them out so you just need to sit it exactly on top bring it down and bring this one down and if you just reduce them by by about five each time it, it doesn't have to be it's not um, it's not a science so <laughs> if it's four or six that's okay and we keep doing that it's not quite sitting out there we go and again reduce it down to about and again duplicate you just need to make sure that each time it's sitting exactly because otherwise you have a shake in your in your letters and we're going to bring that down to about seven So this text effect is having a word or a title of name of a business um, really standing out from an image, So, but it's still within the image. So let me just show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick an image that has um, that has a good subject matter in it. So we're going to we're going to use the word yoga. So um, when you search um, yoga, um, you get all of these different um, images. It could be, um, it could be Pilates. It could be a crash. It could be a florist. It could be anything that's related to your business. So basically, you just want to, you just want to make sure. So we're going to pick this one, but you just want to make sure that the the shape of the image fits your artboard pretty well, because otherwise it makes it really difficult to to try and make the words, the letters. Um, match up. So once you have it fully sized to your page we're then going to click on elements again and we're going to go into frames. So we're going to sit each image into a letter basically. So um, the first one we're going to look for is the letter Y. So they don't need to be all the same um, font. I mean you don't want it too crazy looking but um, if you, so we're going to use, say, this Y, we're just going to put it there, and then we're going to go add a letter O. So basically the letter O probably for that one is, is probably this letter, but I, I think I prefer this O shape. So because then we can make it kind of smaller in there. And then we're going to go... So it's all about you know what what you think looks good, um, but but it also has to be readable. So um, just you know to not just go too crazy. Um, so then the G. Can I just pick this G? And then the letter A. And we might go for a this A. So once you have your letters all um, picked, then basically what you do is you click on your background Im image and you duplicate it. And when you click and hold on it and drag it over the Y, it'll sync into that shape, into that frame. So we just um, keep doing that for each letter.
and then they're all they're all within it. So although yeah, it, you can still read that it says yoga, but it looks a bit crazy. So basically, how you make them the same is you click on each letter twice, and then you make them make it so it's the same size as your as your background image, and you just adjust it over it just so you can see. So that's pretty good. And then you click off and then you do the same with each other letter. So that's why it's good to have um, the background shape the same, the same kind of orientation and the same um, size pretty much as, as your image because otherwise it makes it really difficult to match up the image. You just keep moving through the letters. That's pretty good. And then the last one is this one. And click off. So you shouldn't be able to see the outline of any letter. If you can, you just need to go back in and just kind of readjust it slightly. And then you click on your background image and you just bring the transparency way down to about 30. And you end up with a really effective standout word. I think it's pretty good. So if you're learning some new things as we go through this, please hit that subscribe. So the next one we're going to do is um, a juice one. So this could be um, for a packaging or a product. Um, but I'm just going to show you how we can add a gradient and add a background to it. So we're going to use type gradient. So once you open this, you key in what your word is going to be, and then you're going to click on font. So we're going to use one called Super Woobly. Um, it's because it's kind of kind of bubbly looking. Um, and then we're going to change the color. Okay, and then click Add to Design. We're just going to increase the size of it. Just center it. So once we have our gradient created, we're going to duplicate the page and we're going to make this completely black without a gradient. So if Sometimes in the type gradient, the font that you use is available as a as a text. Do you know if you add a text box, um, you can you can see uh, is it? I'll just show you. Um, so if we select that, just I'm just gonna make it bigger so you can see. But if we key in here, um, it's called Woobly. Um, it says we couldn't find any results, so that's not available in the normal Canva text. So, um, because of that, we need to do it. Um, we need to do it a different way. So, um, basically, so after all that, we <laughs> we duplicate the page and we click on Edit. So it brings us back into the type gradient. And here we're going to make it. Um, we're going to make each color black. I'm going to delete the center one and then we're going to make this one black as well. So then we basically have the same um, but in black. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into an image. So we're going to click on share and we're going to click download. And you just need to make sure that you're on. So we're going to deselect all 
and that you're on the correct page. So you can see that um, it says page five, just in case you have a couple of pages that look similar. Um, and we're going to click done and we're going to click transparent background and download. And we're just going to call it juice black. <clears throat> and then we're going to go back to our original page and we're going to click on uploads and upload file. And you just need to be sure that you're clicking on the correct one. And once it comes in, you just click on it and then you just make it to the size of the page and it should then sit over the other one um, exactly. Just reduce them up and down. And then when we click on edit image, um, it, it's an image, it doesn't, go, it doesn't bring you back into the type gradient. So we're going to click on glow. So it will bring you into this section here. So we're going to have a, a zero blur and we're going to have the transparency, <coughs> excuse me, 100. And we're going to make that maybe five and apply. And then when we click on position, it's going to bring that. So then you have like a complete outline on the, um, on the juice, which is pretty good. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing except this time we're going to edit and we're going to make this white. So you click on gradient, bring it up to the white and the same with the other side, click on white, update element and then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to share it and make it into an image. So once again, we're on deselect all, click on page five, make it a transparent background and download. And then we're going to call this one Juice White. We'll go back to our original page, click on Upload, Upload Files, Juice White, click on Open. So when you click on it then it will come onto the page and then we just resize it just going to top and bottom it and it should sit directly over the um, orange one. So in order to be able to see what we're doing, we're just going to make the background a different color just to contrast it. And we're going to um, position this one below the black. So then we're going to edit image. And we're going to click on shadows again and we're going to click on glow and glow once again and we're just going to bring this up to about 12. We're going to make the transparency 100. We're going to break the blur nothing and then we're going to make this white. So once you have your orange background in place you can see, um, you know, so if you wanted it more um, it probably maybe looks a little better actually with more. So and then just click apply. So then we're going to make it just a little bit more interesting. We're going to add a background to this. So if you key in orange bubbles, you get kind of these kind of effects. We're just going to put it behind all of that. It, you know, it really stands out, obviously, but it is a pro picture. So I'm just going to show you um, if you didn't have um, the pro version, we can just key in bubbles and um, just go in photos. We can pick this one here and what we can do is this is more kind of condensation, to be honest, it's not really bubbles, but um, we can make the background orange and then put this over it and then change the transparency down and then suddenly it becomes, um, they become like orange bubbles. Just It's just if you didn't have um, the pro version. So, um, but this this works pretty good. And so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to 
um, we're going to click on frames and we're going to search for bubbles. So there's one there. So And then we're just going to color them white. I'm just going to duplicate it. If you kind of slightly change each one, well then it doesn't look like that you've just duplicated everything. So if you make like some of them smaller and rotate them. And here and then if you click on position and again if you click on the top one and the bottom one and hold shift at the same time well then you can um, group them all together and then move them below the text um, and just and then if you just have some shapes circle shape just going to make that white. Then you can have like individual bubbles. Duplicate, make it slightly smaller. Duplicate again and just have individual ones. And You know, you can have as many or as few as you want, but um, it makes it makes it kind of interesting then when you've you know because you're kind of replicating the bubbles that are in the background. If you found this video useful, then hit the subscribe, and then I know to make more.